Uh, all right. Monsieur. Thank you. All right. <laughs> okay. Ça va? On peut y aller? Excellent. All right. Good afternoon. Uh, let me start off with a statement on Bolivia. The Secretary General remains deeply concerned about developments in Bolivia. He reiterates his appeal to all Bolivians to refrain from violence and exercise maximum restraint. The Sp Secretary General has asked Jean Arnaud to engage as his personal envoy with all Bolivian actors and offer United Nations support in efforts to find a peaceful resolution to the crisis, including through transparent, inclusive, and credible elections. Mr. Arnaud will be traveling to Bolivia today. Mr. Arnaud, as you know, is the former special representative of the Secretary General for Colombia. He's also served as his special representative in Georgia, Afghanistan, Burundi, and Guatemala. Turning to Somalia, 19, nearly $19 million has been released from uh, both the UN Central Emergency Response Fund and the Somalia Humanitarian Fund to scale up life-saving assistance to more than half a million people affected by recent floods. The flooding has destroyed infrastructure, farmlands, and roads. Livelihoods have been disrupted, and homes have been inundated in many areas, displacing some 370,000 people. The funds will help UN agencies and our partners to quickly distribute food aid, deploy rapid response teams, support health facilities, and provide shelter, water, sanitation and hygiene, nutrition, education, and other critical protection services. The funds will also support the UN Humanitarian Air Service to transport essential goods and personnel into areas made hard to reach due to the floods. Despite this influx of flooding, of funding, excuse me, significant gaps remain. The UN and our partners estimate that at least an additional $50 million is required for the immediate life-saving response to these floods. And the World Health Organization um, announced uh, today uh, a technique that sterilizes male mosquitoes using radiation that will soon be tested as part of global health efforts to control diseases such as chikungunya, dengue, and Zika. The sterile insect technique as a form of insect birth control to help reduce insect population. Uh, according to WHO, half of the world's population is now at risk for dengue fever. And in a joint report by the International Labor Organization, the World Bank, the World Health Organization, and Water Aid highlight the unsafe and undignified working conditions of sanitation workers in several developing countries. The report issued to mark World Toilet Day on November 19th is the most extensive exploration to date of the plight of sanitation workers in the developing world. It is based on a study in Bangladesh, uh, done in Bangladesh, Bolivia, Burkina Faso, Haiti, India, Kenya, Senegal, South Africa, and Uganda. And according to the study, most sanitation workers are in the formal, informal economy and are deprived of their rights and protection. Um, and just a couple more uh, notes. The FAO and the Food and Agriculture Organization published today new guidelines aimed at assuring crop diversity and farmers' resilience to plant genetic resource loss. And according to the agency, these guidelines are a valuable aid to countries in developing uh, national plants to conserve critical crop resources. And today, as you know, is World Diabetes Day. In his message, the Secretary General recalls that more than 420 million people suffer from diabetes worldwide, a treatable and often preventable disease largely driven by unhealthy diets, physical inactivity, and poor access to health services and medicine. Affirming that diabetes damages health and undermines educational employment aspirations for many, the Secretary General also stresses how it affects communities and forces families into economic hardship through catastrophic medical expenses. Uh, his message is available to you online. And also today from 1 to 2 p.m. in the UN Bookshop, you're in invited to attend a talk by Vladimir Druzo, the author of the book, the investigator, Demons of the Balkan War, will talk and he will be uh, discussing his new book in a conversation with your colleague Pamela Falk. The book is about how he and his team of investigators pieced together the truth 
about the Ovkara massacre in Croatia, which led to the arrest of uh, Slavko Dokmanovic, one of the people responsible for it. Mr. Juzor worked as an investigator for the Office of the Prosecutor of the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia and is currently chief of the UN Office of Internal Oversight Services in New York. And I had a note uh, with an update from Mr. Mladenov, but I think uh, I left it in my office. Somebody will bring it to me. In the meantime, uh, Maria, please. Follow up on your announcement on Bolivia, mm -hmm. uh, this uh, special envoy, which uh, Secretary General, whom Secretary General is sending, uh, what mandate he has? Uh, is he planning any meetings with the acting president or somebody else in Bolivia? Uh, he will t speak to uh, engage with all relevant actors uh, in Bolivia to offer the UN's uh, support and uh, to find a peaceful solution uh, to this ongoing crisis. Mario. Just to follow up, does this respond to a request from uh, different parties uh, in the country? Uh, former President Evo Morales has publicly called for a UN mediation. Is okay. Th this is something done on the Secretary General's own initiative as a, as a personal envoy uh, mm -hmm. in an effort to help the, um, help the people of Bolivia uh, find a path, a peaceful path, out of uh, out of the current crisis, and yes, go ahead. Just one more. Um, has the has she been personally in touch with Mr. Morales or with any other? No, I'm not aware that the Secretary General has spoken to Mr. Morales. Uh, and just an update on Gaza. Um, Nikolai Mladenov, um, the UN Special Coordinator, said today that Egypt and the UN had worked hard to prevent the most dangerous escalation in and around Gaza from leading to war. He said that in the coming hours and days will be critical that all must show maximum restraint and do their part to prevent bloodshed. The Middle East does not need more wars, Mr. Mladenov said. Yes, sir. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, with uh, regard that the Secretary General have appointed a personal uh, mm -hmm. uh, envoy to, to Bolivia, which is his prerogative, of course. Uh, why did the Secretary General, or does the Secretary General, let me rephrase, does the Secretary General intend to appoint a personal envoy uh, for uh, the evolving situation in Iraq and Lebanon? Because I know that the heads of the missions are already involved with no, humanitarian I mean, yeah. and other. I, I, th I think you've, you've, you've answered your own question. I think in, in Lebanon, uh, Mr. Kubish is the special coordinator. He has a very specific uh, mandate. Uh, Ms. Uh, Hanis Pleshert is the special representative in Iraq with a specific mandate. There, is, there are structures there for the UN to support uh, the Iraqi people and the people of Lebanon. So there is no, there is no plan to, to uh, add an additional, uh, an additional layer. Each situation is uh, different. Madam. Uh, Stefan, I have two questions. One on Palestine, a follow-up on uh, Mr. Mladenov's um, statement. I did not hear any condemnation of the killing of Palestinian civilians by Israeli uh, military. I think we, we've uh, always condemned the killing of civilians, and I would refer you to what we said yesterday. Okay, I have something on Iraq. Yep. Okay, so Ms. Uh, the representative of the Secretary General, Mrs. Janine Hennis, uh, a week ago tweeted... Um, um, on, on one of her tweets, she said that the Iraqis and the demonstrators should not uh, block oil um, installations. And that was received as a very problematic tweet by many Iraqis. She got at least around 7,000 response. And um, how do you respond to that? Do you see that the UN representative should tell very peaceful demonstrators in Baghdad and other Iraqi uh, cities, that sh the, how they should demonstrate, especially that they are demonstrating in a peaceful way. Thank you. The, the UN has always and will always defend the rights of people to demonstrate uh, peacefully. Uh, as the Secretary General said, I think when he spoke to you, to all of you a few weeks ago, it's, uh, it's also about the need for governments to listen to the real demands of real people. Uh, and this is what we're seeing in a number of countries around the world. Uh, we've also uh, taken note of, uh, of, of the violence that has been, that has been occurring uh, as well. But 
we are there to help uh, support the people of Iraq, to help the government move forward on uh, necessary reforms and necessary moves, uh, and to listen to the, to the voices of the people. But do you see the problem in her tweet, uh, and also given the fact that she did not apologize, actually? I mean, that a UN official telling um, Iraqi people ha um, how they should demonstrate, Spe specifically that they are actually very peacefully to block a road for oil uh, companies or oil uh, Look, I, I'm not fields. going to, I'm not going to second guess uh, the Secretary General's special envoy. I think I would refer you <coughs> to the very powerful remarks she delivered uh, to parliamentarians uh, yesterday or the day before and on the need for uh, the government uh, to step up in uh, answering the demands of the people. Yes, Sidi. Um, two questions, Steph. Uh, first, um, does the Secretary General have any reaction to the announcement by judges from the International Criminal Court that they have opened an investigation into crimes committed by against Myanmar's Rohingya Muslim minority in Bangladesh? No, uh, it is not for us to comment on procedures uh, going on in the judicial end of uh, the UN system. I think the Secretary General has spoken out very clearly and very forcefully on the need uh, to address uh, the situation of the Rohingyas uh, and for the government of Myanmar to put in place a number of, of actions um, and for justice to be done. But we have no specific comment on that case. Um, <coughs> and as a second question, a follow-up on Bolivia. Um, is the new personal envoy um, going to be heading to La Paz this week? Uh, he's going to Bolivia today. Today? Today. Masood and Stefano. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you very much. I just wanted to find out about this situation in, uh, what do you call it, in Gaza, uh, in vis a vis Israeli attacks or killing of the Palestinians who they deemed were terrorists. How do you determine who were terrorists and who were not terrorists? Uh, I would refer you to the statement we made, uh, we made, uh, we made yesterday, um, and I will leave it at that for the time, uh, for the time being, as the situation is ongoing. Yes, so, so you take the word of the Israeli government. It's not about taking the word. We've always stood against, uh, yes, in principle, against extrajudicial extra killings. Stefano, thank you, Stefan. Uh, last week, I asked you what the Secretary General thought about the renewal of an agreement between uh, Italy and uh, Libya for handling of the migrants in the Mediterranean. Uh, this week, Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch submitted a joint third-party intervention to the European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg. Uh, the intervention relates to a recent case that raises issues surrounding Italy's role in the fate of migrants who are stopped in the Mediterranean, returned, and indefinitely detained in Libya. So uh, it's a kind of important news because right, uh, Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International are following uh, this issue. I ask again, uh, what does the Secretary General think that the, the agreement that has been uh, on for three years has been just renewed? Does he has does he has any advices for uh, Look, on, on the, the Italian government on on the agree specificity of the agreement? I would ask you to ask UNHCR and uh, the International Organization of Migration. From the Secretary General's standpoint, uh, he strongly and personally believes that uh, refugees. Uh, have certain rights. Those rights need to be respected. He believes that migrants also need to be treated uh, with dignity and with respect. Um, and as for Libya, it's been clear for us for quite some time that Libya is not an appropriate place uh, for refugees uh, and migrants to either be sent back to or to actually be. And as you know, uh, UNHCR and, and IOM and others have been involved in programs of taking people out because we've seen the violence that they've had to endure uh, in terms of the ongoing conflict right now in Libya. Sir. Thank you, Stefan. 
Stefan, uh, different ONGs in Colombia are sending the alarm of the increasing of the recruitment of children mm -hmm. in the front line of fire in Colombia. What is the information that you have about it, and what is the Secretary General concern when the international humanitarian rights order to protect the, kid, uh, the life of the kids in these kind of situations? And, and let me appoint that uh, you, yesterday you made a report about the number of migrants from Venezuela to Colombia, mm -hmm. and part of these children are Venezuelans as well. Yeah, this, on the issue of recruitment of children, I'll need to get an update for you uh, on the specifics of Colombia. <laughs> Obviously, within uh, the refugees and the migrants that are coming out of Venezuela, there are an important number of children who are especially, uh, in, in, as in all these situations, are in especially vulnerable, uh, precarious <laughs> position, and they need to be protected at all costs. Mr. Abedi. Thank you, Stefan. With respect to the special representative to Bolivia, is the Secretary General concerned about the fact that each time there are domestic problems, he might be forced to appoint special representative? And is this a way of saving uh, the finances of the UN? No. I think the appointment of a personal envoy to, uh, for the situation in Bolivia is not linked to the financial situation in any way. It is about uh, the Secretary General's uh, capacity to be involved in preventive diplomacy, in mediation, and to be helpful uh, in any way uh, in any way we can. Obviously, consultations uh, were had with various parties before uh, the appointment, and it's clear to us that uh, this is something that would be a positive sign, and so the Secretary General went ahead. Preventive diplomacy, as you know, is before the problem breaks out. Well, preventive diplomacy is also before things could get worse. Thank you, staff. A question on Cyprus. The Secretary General's report uh, should be coming out tomorrow. And in the past two reports, he was referring to new ideas. Can you elaborate on these I, new ideas, what I they will, are, what uh, he means by I that? Will, beg your indulgence and ask you to wait for the report to actually come out. As I, I was talking about the past two reports yeah. he had, and he was talking yeah. about new ideas right. in those reports. And uh, can you elaborate what these new ideas are? What is he referring I will, I will, to? The, the report is about to, I, I understand you're talking about the past reports. The new report is going to come out, and I'll just have to wait a little bit. Masood. Yes, sir. On this uh, talks between, if you have been asked this question, uh, before talks between Saudi Arabia and Yemeni Houthis going on in Oman, do you have any update on that? Uh, not uh, more than what I told ED yesterday. Nothing. Uh, yes, yes, not, yes, nothing yes, more than what I told ED yesterday. Yes, sir, Mr. Abedi. Uh, later on, the Secretary General will be receiving Mr. David Rockefeller. What is the subject of discussion? It's a very good question. I will try to find out. On this very valid question, I bid you. Farewell. Fahan will be here tomorrow, so be on time. <laughs>